Would you like free audiobooks? Click the link in the description. Question 1. A client with chronic kidney disease is scheduled for a hemodialysis session. Which of the following findings is a routine observation and does not require immediate notification to the healthcare provider before proceeding with dialysis? Select all that apply. A. Serum potassium of 4.5 milli equivalent slash L. B. Blood pressure of 110 over 70 millimeters of mercury. C. Weight gain of 2 kilograms since the last session. D. Presence of a brute and thrill over the arteriovenous fistula. Correct answer, all answers are correct. Rationale. A. A serum potassium level of 4.5 milli equivalent slash L is within the normal range. B. A blood pressure of 110 over 70 millimeters of mercury is within normal limits. C. A weight gain of 2 kg between dialysis sessions can be expected due to fluid accumulation and is a common finding that does not require immediate notification. D. The presence of a brute and thrill over the arteriovenous fistula indicates a patent and functioning fistula, which is necessary for effective hemodialysis. This finding is expected and does not require immediate notification. Question 2. A nurse is caring for a client admitted with septic shock. Which intervention should the nurse prioritize? A. Frequent repositioning. B. Administration of prescribed antibiotics. C. Application of sequential compression devices. D. Dietary consultation for protein supplementation. Correct answer. B. Rationale. In septic shock, timely administration of prescribed antibiotics is critical for combating the underlying infection and improving client outcomes. While A, C, and D are important in overall client care, they are not as immediately life-saving as antibiotic therapy in septic shock. Question 3. A nurse is preparing to administer a blood transfusion. What is the priority action by the nurse to ensure client safety? A. Verify the client's identity with two identifiers. B. Check the expiration date on the blood bag. C. Assess the client's vital signs. D. Obtain informed consent for the transfusion. Correct answer. A. Rationale. Ensuring correct client identification with at least two identifiers before administering a blood transfusion is crucial to prevent life-threatening errors. B, C, and D are also important, but A is the priority to prevent ABO incompatibility reactions. Question 4. A client with asthma presents to the emergency department with acute exacerbation. Which assessment finding would warrant immediate intervention by the nurse? A. Use of accessory muscles. B. Wheezing on auscultation. C. Oxygen saturation of 89% on room air. D. Respiratory rate of 22 breaths per minute. Correct answer. C. Rationale, an oxygen saturation below 90% indicates significant hypoxemia requiring immediate intervention, such as supplemental oxygen. A, B, and D are common in asthma exacerbations, but do not warrant as immediate an intervention as hypoxemia. Question 5. A client is post-operative day 1, following a total hip replacement. Which finding should the nurse report to the surgeon immediately? A. Pain at the surgical site. B. Mild swelling of the affected leg. C. Temperature of 38.2 degrees Celsius 100.8 degrees Fahrenheit. D. Shortness of breath and chest pain. Correct answer. D. Rationale, shortness of breath and chest pain could indicate a pulmonary embolism, a critical complication after surgery. While A, B, and C are concerns that need monitoring, D requires immediate evaluation and management. Question 6. A client diagnosed with type 1 diabetes mellitus has a blood glucose of 55 mg per deciliter. 
The client is alert and oriented, but reports feeling shaky and anxious. What is the best initial action by the nurse? A. Administer 1 mg of glucagon intramuscularly. B. Give 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrate. C. Perform a repeat blood glucose check. D. Provide a snack of protein and carbohydrates. Correct answer. B. Rationale. The initial treatment for mild hypoglycemia in a conscious client is to give 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrate to quickly raise blood glucose levels. A, C, and D can be considered based on the re-evaluation of the client's status after initial treatment. Question 7. A client with bipolar disorder is experiencing a manic episode. What should the nurse prioritize when planning care for this client? A. Encourage participation in group therapy sessions. B. Ensure a quiet environment and minimize stimulation. C. Focus on detailed explanations of all routines and procedures. D. Provide numerous choices for activities and meals. Correct answer. B. Rationale, minimizing environmental stimulation is crucial for clients experiencing mania as it helps reduce sensory overload, which can exacerbate symptoms. A, C, and D may increase stimulation or confuse the client during a manic phase. Question 8. A nurse is assessing a client who had a cerebrovascular accident, CVA, affecting the left cerebral hemisphere. Which symptom would the nurse expect to find? A. Impulsive behavior. B. Difficulty with speech. C. Poor judgment. D. Spatial perceptual deficits. Correct answer. B. Rationale. Damage to the left cerebral hemisphere often results in aphasia or difficulty with speech, as this hemisphere typically houses language functions. A, C, and D are more commonly associated with right hemisphere damage. Question 9. A nurse is planning care for a client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Which intervention should be included to prevent exacerbations? A. Encourage deep breathing exercises. B. Administer sedatives as ordered. C. Increase fluid intake to 3 liters per day. D. Implement a low-sodium diet. Correct answer. A. Rationale. Deep breathing exercises can help maintain airway clearance and improve ventilation in clients with COPD, potentially preventing exacerbations. B. May depress respiratory drive, C. Could lead to fluid retention, and D. Is not directly related to preventing COPD exacerbations. Question 10. A nurse is caring for a client who is receiving intravenous, IV, vancomycin. What is the most important assessment to prevent complications associated with this medication? A. Monitoring for hypertension. B. Regularly checking renal function. C. Assessing for signs of thrombophlebitis. D. Evaluating for tinnitus and hearing loss. Correct answer. B. Rationale, vancomycin can be nephrotoxic, especially with prolonged use or high doses, making regular assessment of renal function crucial. While C and D are important assessments, B is critical for preventing serious kidney damage. Question 11. A nurse is assessing a client who recently started taking clozapine for treatment-resistant schizophrenia. Which finding is most concerning and warrants immediate action? A. Complaints of dry mouth. B. Drowsiness during the day. C. Sore throat and fever. D. Constipation lasting two days. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Clozapine can cause agranulocytosis, a potentially life-threatening decrease in white blood cells. Sore throat and fever could indicate an infection related to agranulocytosis. Immediate action and further assessment are required to prevent severe complications. A, B, 
and D are side effects that also need management but are less urgent compared to C. Question 12. A nurse is planning care for a client with heart failure. Which intervention should be prioritized to prevent pulmonary edema? A. Monitoring daily weight. B. Providing supplemental oxygen. C. Limiting fluid intake to 2 liters per day. D. Encouraging low-sodium diet choices. Correct answer. A. Rationale, monitoring daily weight helps detect fluid retention early, a key indicator of worsening heart failure and potential development of pulmonary edema. While B, C, and D are important, it provides the most direct monitoring for fluid status changes. Question 13. A nurse is caring for a client with a history of deep vein thrombosis who is scheduled for surgery. What is the most important action for the nurse to take preoperatively? A. Apply compression stockings. B. Administer anticoagulant therapy as ordered. C. Review the client's coagulation profile. D. Educate the client about the risks of immobility. Correct answer. B. Rationale, administering prescribed anticoagulant therapy is critical to prevent the formation of new thrombi and potential pulmonary embolism, especially preoperatively in clients with a history of DVT. While A, C, and D are also important, B addresses the immediate risk of thromboembolism. Question 14. A nurse is evaluating a client who has been taking isotretinoin for severe acne. Which adverse effect is most critical to assess for? A. Dry skin and lips. B. Elevated mood and energy. C. Joint and muscle pain. D. Signs of depression or mood changes. Correct answer. D. Rationale, isotretinoin has been associated with serious psychological effects, including depression and suicidal ideation. Monitoring for mood changes or depression is critical due to the potential severity of these effects. A, B, and C are common but less critical side effects. Question 15. A nurse is assessing a client with suspected meningitis. Which of the following findings would support this diagnosis? A. Brzezinski's sign. B. Cullen's sign. C. Gray Turner's sign. D. Care's sign. Correct answer. A. Rationale, Brzezinski's sign, neck stiffness causing hips and knees to flex when the neck flexes, is indicative of meningitis. B, C, and D are associated with other conditions, acute pancreatitis and splenic issues, and not meningitis. Question 16. A client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, is experiencing a severe exacerbation. What is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Provide a bronchodilator nebulizer treatment. B. Increase dietary calories. C. Initiate pulmonary rehabilitation exercises. D. Adjust the room temperature to a cooler setting. Correct answer. A. Rationale, providing a bronchodilator nebulizer treatment is crucial during a COPD exacerbation to immediately improve breathing by dilating the airways. B, C, and D are supportive but not immediate interventions during an exacerbation. Question 17. A nurse is preparing a client for a colonoscopy. Which action is essential prior to the procedure? A. Ensuring informed consent is signed. B. Administering a sedative. C. Providing clear liquid diet 24 hours prior. D. Applying an abdominal binder. Correct answer. A. Rationale, ensuring that informed consent is obtained before any invasive procedure, like a colonoscopy is crucial for ethical and legal compliance. While B and C are important pre-procedure preparations, obtaining consent is a priority. D is not relevant to colonoscopy preparation. Question 18. 
A client admitted with acute pancreatitis complains of increasing abdominal pain. What should the nurse do first? A. Administer an analgesic as prescribed. B. Place the client in a fetal position. C. Check amylase and lipase levels. D. Apply a warm compress to the abdomen. Correct answer. A. Rationale, administering an analgesic as prescribed should be the first action to manage the client's pain effectively and improve comfort. B, C, and D are supportive measures but do not directly address the immediate need for pain relief. Question 19. A nurse is caring for a client who has just undergone a lumbar puncture. What is the priority nursing action post-procedure? A. Encourage the client to ambulate. B. Monitor for signs of infection. C. Instruct the client to remain flat for several hours. D. Assess the puncture site for hematoma formation. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Instructing the client to remain flat for several hours post-lumbar puncture helps prevent the development of a headache, a common complication. While B and D are important, they are not as immediate as C. A is contraindicated immediately post-procedure. Question 20. A client with atrial fibrillation is on warfarin therapy. What is the most important laboratory value for the nurse to monitor? A. White blood cell count. B. Hemoglobin and hematocrit. C. International normalized ratio, INR. D. Blood urea nitrogen, BUN. Correct answer. C. Rationale, monitoring the international normalized ratio, INR, is critical in clients on warfarin to ensure therapeutic anticoagulation levels and prevent either thrombosis or bleeding. A, B, and D are important but less critical in the management of warfarin therapy. Question 21. A nurse is caring for a client receiving total parenteral nutrition, TPN. Which assessment is most critical for detecting complications early? A. Monitoring for signs of infection at the catheter site. B. Measuring urine output every 4 hours. C. Checking blood glucose levels every 6 hours. D. Assessing daily weight and nutritional intake. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Frequent monitoring of blood glucose levels is essential in clients receiving TPN due to the high glucose content in TPN solutions, which can lead to hyperglycemia. While A, B, and D are important for overall monitoring, C is critical for preventing severe metabolic complications. Question 22. A nurse is assessing a client with a suspected myocardial infarction. Which symptom is most indicative of this condition in women? A. Severe chest pain with radiation to the left arm. B. Sudden onset of heavy sweating. C. Unexplained fatigue or malaise. D. Pain localized over the sternum. Correct answer. C. Rationale. Women often experience non-traditional symptoms of myocardial infarction, such as unexplained fatigue, nausea, or general malaise, more frequently than the classic symptom of severe chest pain. Recognizing these atypical presentations is crucial for timely intervention. Question 23. A nurse is caring for a client with end-stage liver disease. Which complication should the nurse monitor for as a priority? A. Peripheral neuropathy. B. Esophageal varices. C. Renal calculi. D. Pancreatitis. Correct answer. B. Rationale, esophageal varices are a common and life-threatening complication of end-stage liver disease due to portal hypertension. Monitoring for signs of bleeding, such as hematemesis or melina, is crucial. A, C, and D, while important, are less directly related to liver disease progression. Question 24. A nurse is preparing a client for discharge who has been prescribed a new anticoagulant medication. 
What is the most important information to review with the client? A. The need to wear a medical alert bracelet. B. Methods for managing nausea. C. Techniques for self-injecting the medication. D. Signs of bleeding and when to seek medical attention. Correct answer. D. Rationale, educating the client about recognizing signs of bleeding and understanding when to seek medical attention is crucial for safety while on anticoagulant therapy. This knowledge can prevent serious complications. A, B, and C are also important but secondary to understanding bleeding risks. Question 25. A nurse is caring for a client who is postoperative following abdominal surgery and reports a sudden, sharp pain in the calf. What is the nurse's first action? A. Apply a warm compress to the affected area. B. Assess the leg for signs of deep vein thrombosis. C. Encourage the client to ambulate to reduce stiffness. D. Administer prescribed analgesics for pain relief. Correct answer. B. Rationale. The sudden onset of calf pain postoperatively could indicate deep vein thrombosis, DVT, a potentially life-threatening condition. The nurse should first assess for signs of DVT, such as swelling, redness, and localized heat. A, C, and D may be considered after excluding or confirming a DVT. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.